Transformers more than meets the eye. Autobots wage their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. Hey guys, welcome back to another installment of DT's Big Unboxing Show, where basically I take over the channel and show you guys some cool stuff for old geeks like me. So today I'm gonna to be unboxing my big item for this Christmas. If you guys saw our Christmas video on our vlog channel, you know what it is. It is the XM Studios 110 scale Optimus Prime. And I just wanted to start off by saying this is not a toy. In fact, it even says so on the box. It says, adults note, collector's model, not suitable for children under 14 years not a toy. So everything I show you on this segment is a high-end collectible, meaning it's not something you can easily find on Amazon or your local toy store. So this piece here retails for over $1,600. It actually costs over $400 to ship because it's so heavy and it has to be imported from Singapore. So that factored in with sales tax, you're easily looking at about $2,000 for this model. Not a cheap hobby. Now this box was made to look like the old Transformers toy packaging back in the 80s. Now I grew up in the 80s and for me, it was all about Star Wars, Masters of the Universe, G.I. Joe, and Transformers. And Optimus Prime was probably one of my biggest heroes at the time. I liked this guy so much, I asked my dad to make me a costume for Halloween one year. I even have a poster signed by the voice of Optimus Prime himself, Peter Cullen. Of course, he is the leader of the Autobots. And right here, we have some of his stats. He's almost a 10 in every category except for speed. And that, he's got a nine. So comic book wise, he first appeared in this book right here, Transformers number one, back in 1984. So this box right here weighed over 100 pounds. The kids had to deliver it to me on a dolly. So I didn't want to risk trying to slide this down the stairs. So I actually opened this upstairs. I took out each layer and I brought it down here to show you guys. Okay, so here we have the contents of the top layer. Uh, as you can see, everything is nicely wrapped up for protection. Let's get this paper removed so we can show you things a little better. Okay, so here's the open contents. As you can see, there's a lot of pieces to this statue. I won't show you every piece up close right now because we'll see everything in detail a little later when everything's put together, but I will show you uh, some of the larger pieces. Like, here is one of the legs. Look at that, guys. That is just awesome. Here's the key where it connects to the base. This thing is heavy. The other leg is even bigger. Uh, this one has a peg on the bottom, as well as a key. Take a look at that. So here's a part for the base, the Crash Decepticon. Here's a piece of Optimus Prime's arm. Again, the paint looks amazing on this. Here is the jet pack. And there are some lights in there. So the light up features, of course, require batteries. I heard there are 13 batteries you'll need to light up everything. There's a little compartment and you will need AG13 1.5 volt batteries. So the batteries are not included. Uh, I was able to pick a big pack up on Amazon. I think I got a pack of 100. If you do want to use the light up features, uh, each one will have its own little switch. So you're going to have to turn on a bunch of switches if you want to light everything up at once. There's no way to light them up with one switch. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. The windshield opens up like this to display the matrix of leadership. Here's a look at Optimus Prime's hands. Here's a look at the wheels. And you'd think this would be rubber or plastic, but it's actually a sculpted piece. One more thing here we'll take a look at is the ax. This is the alternate arm. Look at that blade there. That thing is sharp. And that's gonna do it for the top layer. We'll take a look at the bottom layer and then we'll put this guy together. Okay guys, so here we have the bottom layer. As you can see, I already removed the base to make it a little easier to move down the stairs. Uh, this thing is very heavy. So we're gonna go ahead and unwrap the rest of this stuff so you guys can get a better look. Okay, so here we have the contents of the second level. 
Most of this stuff has to do with the base, the base for Optimus, as well as the base for the alt mode. And we also have Optimus's gun and one of his hands right here. That is a pretty cool gun. We also have his two portraits. They look very similar side by side. Once you put them on the statue, one actually looks up while the other one looks to the side. And of course we have the alt mode and this guy is super heavy too. This whole thing has been a workout just holding these pieces up like this. My biceps are killing me. I think we're ready to get all this stuff out of the container and build Optimus Prime. So here is the big guy in all his glory. As you can see, he is a very tall statue, but it is awesome. So let's start down here with the base. It appears to be some sort of Cybertronian floor with its hexagonal grid pattern. The texturing is pretty incredible. We've even got the same pattern repeating within each hexagon. It's got a bronze copper color with some greens thrown in to give it that aged metal appearance. We've got these cool snaking metal coils that kind of loop around. It gives it sort of an organic feel, yet still very mechanical. I like that the surface is sloped downwards, opposed to being flat. It just makes the pose a little more dynamic. And it also lets you see the full detail in the tops of his feet. And there is a lot of detail on this statue. The floor appears to be breaking, as we can see a bunch of cracked tiles, metal pipes, and more of that twisting coil. And underneath, we have what looks like some sort of volcanic rock, with all these little holes and crevices. And to set the scene a little more, back here we have a down Decepticon ship. There's a jet engine and what appears to be a wing of some sort. The purple color reminded me of Skywarp, which was actually the very first Transformer I ever owned. So who knows, is this a Cybertronian version of Skywarp? The character did get killed off several times in the old show. So moving on to Mr. Prime himself, the sculpt on this guy is top notch. It's got just the right amount of classic G1 goodness combined with modern robotics. You can see every nut and bolt, some exposed cables. You can see all the joints in his fingers. Now this is the Optimus Prime that I want to see in the movies. And we got a hint of that in Bumblebee the movie um, when they showed some of the flashback scenes. I wasn't a big fan of the Michael Bay Transformers. They were just a little bit too crazy looking for me. Uh, I much prefer this G1 inspired look. There are some little pieces here that you have to add on. You just snap in here magnetically. I like how his midsection there is a little bit curved, uh, not so blocky to give it more of that uh, humanoid appearance. You can see the front tire kind of pushed up there on the sides. 
as well as the folded in side mirrors. We've got windshield wipers on the windshield. And of course, the windshield opens up to reveal the matrix of leadership. We've got the Autobot symbol there on his left shoulder, along with two exhaust pipes. You get four of them, and each of them are color-coded, so you know which arm to attach them to. And of course, he's got his big blaster. Reminds me of the old toy. Of course, a lot more detailed. Ready to blast some Decepticons. So over here, we have some of the switch-out pieces. Uh, there are quite a few. We have a completely different set of arms here. So his right arm that holds the blaster can either be pointing at eye level or up at the sky. And his left arm can be held out with his hand sort of extended, or you can switch out his hand for the Energon Axe. On his alternate left arm, you can put a bare fist and also his little communicator info screen. You can also use a second head so he's actually looking at the screen. So I think my favorite pose is probably this one right here where his gun is at eye level. I even like the one where it's pointed up at the sky. The problem is uh, that one from bottom of the base to the top of the gun is close to 39 inches tall. So it's going to be hard to find a place to put it. The Energon Axe is cool too, um, but I think I prefer this natural hand opposed to having that axe. So to switch out the arms, it's really easy. You just pull it out. It's just connected with a peg and a magnet. Uh, these, these arms are pretty heavy. Stick in the new arm like that. Give him a new hand. Pop his head off there. Put the new one on like that. So I think him looking at the screen is really cool. Uh, the thing I don't like is that his gun is still pointed outwards. And it sort of reminds me of like somebody driving and texting at the same time. They just look distracted. They should be focused on driving and Optimus here should be focused on what he's shooting at. He could be like, hey, what's going on, Bumblebee? Oh, shoot. Sorry about that. I think if the gun was pointed down and he was looking at the screen, it would look a lot more natural. Uh, he's also got this cool rocket pack. And just like the rest of the statue, this thing is incredibly detailed. So to attach the rocket pack, you just remove this back piece. It's on there with a really strong magnet and the rocket pack just snaps into place. So I haven't decided yet whether I'm gonna display this guy with the rocket pack or without, um, but it does look very impressive. But I've got a question for you guys. Can Optimus Prime fly without the rocket pack? I swear, I saw an episode where Autobots were flying through the air shooting Decepticons without rocket packs. And then later in another episode, I think Sideswipe gives Optimus Prime a rocket pack. He flies into the air chasing after some Decepticons. They shoot him with a blaster <laughs> and he falls back to Earth and crash lands. Can he fly without this rocket pack? Considering they included such an elaborate rocket pack with this statue, I'm guessing he cannot fly without the rocket pack, but I guess that's up for debate. If you guys know, leave a comment down below. So the light up features on this guy are pretty cool. In the chest area, we have the matrix of leadership and the truck lights. Both the heads have light up eyes, which can be activated by removing a piece on the top of the head and pressing a little button. The screen on his left arm can be illuminated by removing the magnetic cover on the arm. And of course, we have the blinking lights on the rocket boosters. Change his arm out one more time. This time we'll put the axe on. And to finish it off, we have the alt mode, Optimus Prime in his truck form. There's not a lot of assembly for this piece, um, but it does have a removable bumper, front and back. We have to attach these exhaust pipes and also the two side mirrors. This is like a statue in itself. It is heavy. It is just as detailed as Optimus Prime in robot form. I think it's great they include this piece. It's awesome to be able to see both Optimus in his robot and truck form at the same time. There aren't any moving pieces on this statue. Uh, you would think that maybe the tires roll, but they don't. They are uh, stuck in place. So don't think you're gonna go and uh, do uh, little car races with this thing. It's meant to be a display piece. And these stands right here, these little hexagon pieces, kind of look like coasters. They have a felt bottom. I thought this whole thing was one piece, this base, but you can kind of rearrange them in different ways. They're not magnetic, so they don't actually attach to each other. Um, it might have been cool if they did, but they don't. I mean, you're supposed to be putting this thing there and just leaving it, so 
Uh, that's not a big deal. You just arrange it like so and put the truck on top. And there you go. Okay guys, so that was my review on the XM Studios 1 10th scale Optimus Prime statue. Uh, what can I say? It is awesome. So after seeing this, I am seriously considering picking up the Megatron or one of the other statues in this line. They all look amazing. So if you guys want to see that, make sure to leave a comment down below, a like on this video, and I will get one to review. Now I have to figure out where I am going to put this thing. Like I said, it is massive and I am running out of space. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.